Hi guys, my name is Chan Sang. Uh, previously, I worked in Amazon and I love data science, so I'm here. Our team name is called Deep Blue. It means the supercomputer that defeats Kasparov on the chess game. This is the agenda. I will talk very quickly about everything. First of all, the why. Then, what are the components of the Yelper? Then, how we build it? Then, we will show you guys three demos. Then, finally, we will summarize everything. We need a recommendation, not only because information overload is everywhere, but also that it makes us very, it is very difficult for us to digest, consume everything. Life is short. Okay, I like I like this. <laughs> we need recommendation. That's why we listen to our grandma. We listen to our mentors in company. And recommendation system is very common, extremely common recently. Amazon Echo, um, Netflix movie. You don't want to spend your valuable time on lousy movies and Facebook. So another very important reason is that real-time recommendation system is, is also, it will potentially become a norm. Because we have sheer amount of data we, have, we need to process. Now, what it takes to build a recommendation system? This is, my motivation is that I, I'm not only want interested in the recommendation algorithm itself, but also I want to know what it takes to build the whole thing. We also use the data Yelp Challenge 2016 dataset. Very briefly, it contains some of the data, user data, business data, uh, review data, check-in data, but I mainly use two data sets, user and business. This is the overall components of a recommendation system. First of all, we have the data. Then we build the, rec the, the underlying recommendation engine on the hood. Then we have a couple of visualization to understand um, what are the relationship between the users and, and businesses. Then we have, we need to have a user's a web server such that users can uh, interact with our system. Then we, since we're dealing with huge amounts of um, the user requests, so that's why we need something, something got, we, we, need to, we need to handle the stream. So we are using Spark and Kafka. So what exactly the technical step that we want to incorporate in this whole system. There's five data sets, uh, five data in this Yelp data set. We are mainly concentrated on business and user. Um, and the first thing that is very important is that I decompose all the data into small partitions by cities. Because as you imagine, each city is different. They have their own genes. China, Beijing is very different with New York. So if you, want, if you want to recommend something in China, and maybe it's different in, in New York City. Then we have our underlying uh, recommendation algorithm. There are a couple of algorithms we can use. Um, this is a, probably the most widely used one. It's called matrix factorization base. Uh, if I have more time, I, I, will, I would love to try more like content-based one, uh, if possible, but I don't, so. Um, then we tried the um, graph visualization using Spark GraphX and D3. I will show you briefly, shortly, later. Then we have a UI using um, the Google Map API, and it can respond with user requests and return you some rec highly rated recommendations. Then we have, so imagine one thing, if we have hundreds of millions of users flooding into your service, how can you handle that? So that's why we use Kafka. It's, our, it's our, currently as an industry standard, industry like 
um, if you are trying to deal with so much requests, you have to probably you have you cannot avoid because it's it's good this this survey this package and in the end we use Spark Stream to stream the whole thing and uh, eventually we can form a loop. So I will quickly show some some demos. Before that, this is the uh, user business interaction graph. It's a dynamic, and what does it mean is that each node is either a user or a business. Imagine from a very high standpoint of view, you want to know a city. Instead of looking at each restaurant and each library museum, what 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 it does it look like? So. That's my motivation. I want to see what's, what does it look like for each city. But there's so many nodes in, in this data, so I randomly uh, select some of the um, nodes here. Here is, oh, okay. First of all, let's come to our first demo. This is uh, the underlying APIs that you, we are calling Google Map API, and we can change some of the keyword from the URL. <laughs> Actually, I did not spend time to make a very shiny, good-looking UI here. So, but the functionality is right. It's, it's there. You can choose different cities, and you can choose your keywords. You can see currently you're, we're searching bookstore. It will return a bunch of bookstores in the city of Charlotte. And you can change how many, how many top recommendations you want to have, and yeah, so it seems there's no library in Charlotte. And if you want to search as cream, you will, it will return you some highly recommended uh, businesses. Now let's take a look at what is the user business network looks like in, in Madison. If we change our URL from the business recommendation to network, it will show you this dynamic graph. It was built using JavaScript, using the D3 library. And the JavaScript was generated by Python. So I read the code to, read the, to generate the JavaScript because each city is different. The node, we need to, so with the, the nodes and edges, imagine those these blue, blue dots are businesses. I only choose a very small amount of the whole thing. That still looks complicated. Um, what does that mean? It actually has value. Um, graph theory is a very important um, field in both computer science and in social network. Imagine the Facebook gained tremendous value from social network graph. And I will show you very quickly later, because we have other graphs. So here is the graph that's built in the city of Charlotte. Charlotte has, does not have the high uh, economy, economy value, economy level as in Las Vegas. So the graph looks different. Again, each address means that, oh, sorry, I, I forgot to mention, if a user rated reach a business, then there's an edge from this user to that business. And if that business has many hundreds of users ready that business, then you will see something like this small spark. Um, again, this is Las Vegas. We only choose, randomly choose only 1% of the whole, um, the whole um, ratings. And if we choose 2%, we will see differently again. You can generate a lot of value from this graph if you dive deeper. You can you can uh, extract the connect component. You can extract the page rank. You can even extract the. Um, you can do community discovery. You can do key means clustering. Las Vegas again, and the city of Phoenix, Pittsburgh. Anyway, this will be the final demo, and uh, I want to simulate what happens if we have so we have many many users users request our this service this helper. On the left side is the Spark streaming. 
um, H will be ready to take any um, to to handle the request, and it will handle the request at the rate of 1.5 seconds. Of course, we can tune that parameter if when you build your real system. And on the right side is the Apache Kafka. It can um, produce the request that you want to um, pipe into this smart streaming. So again, on the, on the right side, you can see some user requests something, want to recommendation for something in which city. And then in this smart streaming, it handled that in a fault tolerant, in a scalable, and in a scalable way. The purpose is availability. To sum up, uh, what we build is that we, um, the most important thing to remember is that we divide everything into chunks, just similar to what Bernard described before, we chunk the data. And then something that we can tackle and conquer that individually. Then we build the, the recommendation system using recommendation algorithm using the Spark ML lab. Um, and we use the user business graph visualization of using D3 and graph tool in Python to build that uh, graph. Then we use GraphX to generate the generate the connect component. Then, um, then we use the Spark Streaming and Kafka to do the real time required request handling simulation. Finally, we have we're using the Flask and Cherry Pie um, and plus Python Paste to to handle the user request and Google, plus Google App Econ. So what we learn is that streaming data analysis is becoming very important. Just as today, I just noticed that the creator, the inventor of the um, Spark Streaming, the Spark system, the company is called Databricks. It just released a report saying that Spark is already, so compared with the last year, Spark is becoming extremely popular and, uh, and uh, very useful. And if you want to take a look, go to their website and check the report. It's very informative and useful. Um, so the few, for future works, but again, graph analysis is very interesting, and I wish I had more time. I can work on community discovery, such that I can use a content-based um, recommendation algorithm instead of the matrix factorization-based algorithm to fine-tune my recommendation system, such that I can tune more stuff into the users, for example, the user's habits, the, the user's previous uh, like comments, reviews, I can do natural language processing, etc. Um, just to make the recommendation experience more better. So, another thing is that if really it will be very helpful because this Yelp Challenge 2016 data set, it also provided the photo, which is very, very important. We can extract more data from the photo. For example, object recognition, the face recognition. We can use that information combined with business data and then fine tune our recommendation system. So, so essentially, so much work can be done. So, yeah, thank you. You mentioned um, that the graph, that you might take the graph of the connected edges from within a uh, city and then cluster them. What might you do with the results of that clustering? How might we make that useful? So imagine I am a new user and I'm not an um, existing user. Um, the first thing I, I did is, so we can do for a recommendation system is that I want to know what are the most similar users as me? So we can pre when we pre-clustering those graphs, 
then we can know we can have a bunch of clusterings. Then for a new user, I can know which which one of the centroid, which one of the cluster, the centroid of the cluster is most close to me, such that I can then we can you can assign the information from that cluster to me. You can transfer that information to me. Yeah, that can make the recommendation more precise. Any other questions from there? So how fast is streaming? Is the streaming that you did? So how you mean D three? The streaming. So if you oh, do streaming. Streaming. Yeah. Um, so everything now is simulated on my local lap laptop, and uh, it has bottleneck. Once it has so much incoming requests, it will possibly cannot handle everything. One thing is, one um, solution is to put that into clouds so that you can handle that simultaneously in parallel, which I didn't do. <laughs> so. Okay, Spark is, has many badges, so it's not real streaming. So I'm just wondering. Yes, so you can, if I understand, if I understand your question correctly, you can put Spark in clouds and hand, handle multiple requests simultaneously. 